So my name is Adam. Uh, I'm in strategy for uh, DG Ghana. Um, so today I'm going to be speaking to uh, a very handsome gentleman. His name is Jamie Salif. <laughs> So Jamie happens to be the founder and uh, managing director for a business in Ghana, uh, uh, a business called Sankofa uh, Snack Food Limited, right? Okay, Correct. good. Um, and today we're going to be asking him a couple of questions. Um, so Sankofa Snack Food Limited is a Ghanaian-owned business, fully owned business. Uh, and it's a new brand making the waves in Ghana and we want to have a conversation with Jamie and understand um, a couple of things about the brand. Okay, so Jamie, uh, welcome aboard. Thank you, thanks for having me. Super, good. So um, I'll just jump right into it. So um, the very first question is to have a bit of understanding of how your business uh, started. Uh, how did we all get started? Can you tell us a bit about that? Um, sure, sure, sure. Um, so I'll give a, a little bit of background as well. Um, I mean, I guess how it all led up. Um, so before moving back to start the company, I was um, I was actually in New York. I was working for a personal care company there, and the plan was always to come back to do something in food and beverage, right? Um, my thing was always looking at um, a lot of indigenous food products, beverage products that we could re-evolve or modernize and sort of take to the next level. Um, so while I was there, I mean, of course, I was getting a lot of ideas, just looking at all the things in the market there as well. And I had a whole list of stuff that I wanted to work on, stuff with coconut water, stuff with um, plantain chips, other snacks, whatnot. And basically, it was a question of which one would be the most um, cost effective to start and which one would be able to sort of get the markets to bite a bit. Um, so plantain chips was the one that seemed to make sense just because everybody knows what plantain chips are, they're crisps. It's very easy for them to sort of transcend, um, as opposed to, let's say, a very complicated snack bar or something like that, which now you have to explain to people to understand. Ours was really just plantain chips that you were incorporating flavors to, right? Um, so that was how I came up with that as the first snack sort of to, to to let people understand what the brand was supposed to represent, uh, which is the premium African snack brand that is taking traditional ingredients and evolving it with food innovation. Um, so that's pretty much how it came about. Moved back from the States here three years ago, actually, no, 2016. So that's about four years, five years ago. Wow. Yeah. And yeah, been around three years now. And yeah. <laughs> So that's basically a, okay. a gist of how it started, yeah. Super, great stuff. Okay, so um, three years, can you tell us what the journey has been like? Um, you know, have you seen some growth? Has there been some organic growth? Have you done some extensions? Tell us a bit more about the brand and, and how the journey has been so far. Sure. Um, so, when we started off, right off the bat, we were blessed, we were lucky enough. So I started very small. I mean, we rented out a house here, um, repurposed it into a small sort of commercial kitchen. And the, 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 the aim was to sell to modern trade. Actually, originally, the plan was to set it up as a mass market product. The dream was to create you know, a best-in-class product that was extremely accessible, that was everywhere. Um, but after we costed it out, we realized if you wanted to use good quality ingredients, you didn't want it to be artificial, X, Y, and Z, good packaging, the price points just weren't making sense. So we decided to position ourselves as what I was calling, I was calling it mass craft, right? So having the, the friendliness and sort of the accessibility of mass, but the quality of a craft or a premium product. Um, and it was similar to how the, the company I was working for in the States, their beauty products were positioned similarly. Um, so I sort of took that from them and tried to apply that here. Um, and when we started, uh, we were in all modern trade. So your Max Marts, your ShopRite, your Qualys. Um, It wasn't really a challenge getting in. Some people were skeptical because they were thinking, you know, um, the market wouldn't care so much for all this packaging and whatnot. And they're like, you know, people, it's a local or a traditional product. They just want it in the, in the format they're used to. Um, others believed in it. Those who didn't still gave us a shot because it was just exciting to see that sort of product. 
And we were lucky enough the first two years, or even to date, I would say, of course, even to date, it's, it, took off, it took off really, really well. Um, it took off really well. So we had a, a good two years um, when we started off. Um, we realized that some of the shops weren't selling as well, so we pulled back. We were in almost every single modern trade we wanted to be in, but obviously we realized some stores weren't working as well as some. Even with the shop rights, it depends on the location, right? So um, we're not so expensive, but we're still considered a mid-premium product, so we still needed to be in areas where people would be willing to spend uh, just a little bit more, not so much more, but a little bit more for a pack of chips. They're not too driven by price. Um, and it's been a good two years. Two years. The market has been re receptive. I think people were excited just to see something from home in that format. So we had and still have a lot of support from people that way. Um, and yeah, that's how these first two years have, have been since moving to the new facility. So we moved to a new factory. Um, Earlier last year, we got some funding, and that factory was really to facilitate export growth. And so we started early last year with the UK market, um, trying to look at the UK market as the first sort of market we would go to in the West. Um, didn't go to the US because in the US, they've got Ecuador and Colombia and stuff already bringing sort of plantain type products. So we figured Europe would make sense. Um, but it's been tough. It's been hellish because of because of COVID. It would be hellish anyways. It would be challenging anyways. But because of COVID, because of the nature of the product that we're selling and it's sort of new to the market, um, it's been it's been very tough. It's been very tough um, getting people to give us shelf space. You know, people will try the product. They love the product. They're excited about it. But then they'll just tell you they don't think it's the right time because you can't do in-store trials and in-store demos. So they're very hesitant to, to give you a shot. And so it's been our toughest year. The past year, 2020, has been our toughest year just because our expenses have gone up. We've got the infrastructure there, but we haven't seen the growth coming in from the export markets that we really want to. Um, because a lot of the stuff we have to do has been hampered by COVID, right? Um, that's seeing people face to face, doing the in-store demos. You need to educate mm -hmm. people because the product type is pretty new in that space to tell the story so yeah it's been it's been challenging it's been challenging with us yeah yeah it has, it has been all around it has been yeah, all around exactly. so quick follow-up um you, you kept mentioning we so can you tell us apart from you who else is behind this brand uh well actually i say we just because i always sort of represent it as the organization so okay. myself and the team around it, but it's just myself that started it. Um, okay. Last yeah, last year my old boss, my former boss, actually invested. They partnered up with us and they brought us some funding um, to sort of take things to the next level. So they are the partners now, and it's they have a small sort of fund that they set up. Um, but originally it was just myself. Yeah, it's been just myself. Super, super, super. Thanks, thanks, Jamie. Um, so you, you talked about the UK market. Is this just that? Is that just the only market so far you, you're exporting to? Um, yes, um, I would say yes and no. I mean, we've had feelers in other markets. You know, we've had some people take stuff to Nigeria a little bit. Some people take stuff to mm -hmm. Liberia because my dad was actually based out there, so he used to mm -hmm. take stuff there, and it was selling decently well to the to the states as well. But it was never strategic. Meaning it wasn't, it was sent there, it wasn't really being necessarily sold in the channels that we would want to be sold in. For instance, in the US, my aunt was taking it and she was selling it in the African shops, right? Um, that's not really our target market because we are actually trying to position it as sort of an alternative snack that goes with, you know, your mm. pop chips and your kettle brand chips and they are making all these hummus chips and all of that. That's how we want to position it. We don't want to position it as sort of, a, sort of an ethnic set product. Um, but they were putting it into those stores. It was moving okay in those shops. I think in those shops, in the African shops especially, most of the people going there are nostalgic. So they are looking for stuff that is still packaged the old way. And, you know, they want it that way because that's what they yeah. are looking for. Um, but beyond that, it's just been the UK that we've intentionally pushed. Um, in the UK, we managed to get listing with a specialty food distributor there. Their name is Cotswold Fair. Okay. Um, they are one and the other one is the health store. So really, they list your products. They've got access to 
you know, hundreds sometimes or just over a thousand independent stores that buy from them exclusively. But you still have to sell into those shops. So now they've listed us and said, okay, you're good enough for us to put in your catalog and to offer to our, our, our clients. But now we have to find ways of convincing their clients to give us the shelf space and give us a try. That's what has been really the challenge over the past year. Um, I think I'm, I'm also realizing that British people are relatively traditional and it's not as easy to get them to try new things. They like their potato okay. chips. Um, even if, you know, they'll try it and they'll love it, but if they're curious about something on the shelf, if they haven't really been educated or convinced about it, uh, they'll, yeah, they'll sort of snub it off a little bit. So we're having to do quite yeah. a bit of work around that, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so talk to me about um, your competitive competition. Uh, who is in your competitive set, um, really? Um, I guess in Ghana, lo locally, I would say, I would say your local plantain chips. You know that are still packaged and the transparent bags, not the ones on the street. I wouldn't say our competition are, are the guys being sold on the street, the hawkers. Um, I think definitely the quality of the product overall is much different. Um, how it's packaged, the hygiene, um, the flavor concepts that we offer, um, sometimes the quantity in the bag. That's the thing. People are of the impression that what's on the, on the streets is, is much cheaper, but it's really just how they slice the chips, how they package it. But it's, it's not too, too much cheaper by weight because plantains are expensive. So we don't over-premiumize ours. Uh, Sometimes people think we don't. Um, but I think those are the main different pieces. And then back to the question of competitors, I would say Judy Foods. So you've got local plantain chips brands that are sort of up, upping their game now. You've got Judy Foods, um, there's Tainers, which is just there. And I would even go far enough to say we would we would be compared to like Lorenz chips that bring a lot of potato chips into town now. So Lorenz is a brand, I think it's under Lorenz, the brand is called Naturals, and you see it a lot around now. So when you're buying potato chips from the shell shops, etc., realize that that's the brand that's in town. Um, and yeah, so I would say that's that's our competitor. Got it. Yeah. So so those sound like your local. So the combination of both local players and uh, international players in the local yeah. scene. Uh, in yeah. the UK, you mentioned uh, 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 chips, right? Yes, so in the UK, I would say, yeah. I would say Kettle Brand, um, Pop okay. Chips, there's also Tyrrells, I think it is, and then there's Beps, that's also started by a, a Ghanaian entrepreneur, she's based there though, Evianka, okay. it's called Beps, okay. like, um, what else is there, there's one more called Sunmo, S-U-N-M-O, Sunmo, also another one, so that's sort of our competitor set, where it's premium okay. sort of alternative snacks, yeah. Right. Uh, the UK, I can't really say much to how we've performed compared to them because we are still just trying to even yeah, get our yeah. tools in the water. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So tell me, what two things do you believe about the brand Sankofa uh, Foods? Um, you know, is is making you survive in this in a market like Ghana? Um. Hmm. Two things, I think, I mean, and, and it's pretty much the standard, seemingly standard ones. I think it's a combination of quality and price, uh, okay. really. And and under quality, I think everything would come there. So the packaging, um, the quality of the product itself and the taste, uh, the the presentation, the brand story, I think all of that come would come under, under, under quality. Maybe brand story would be a bit more marketing driven, but or brand driven, but I think quality overall and having a price that sort of matches that quality. So even the people, even though people might say we're a little expensive, I think for what you're getting, we're actually not that expensive. You know, we're just more expensive than the cheapest thing you would find. But based on the quality that we're offering, we are not over premiumized. We are, we keep it within range. So I think those two things. I think those two things locally. Thank you. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, so what are your plans for the future? Where do you see Sankofa uh, in the next three, five years? Um, uh, in the next three, five years, I think a combination of 
um, local, and when I say local, I don't even think just Ghana. Local would be Ghana, Nigeria, maybe Ivory Coast. Um, South Africa, I've been thinking about as well. Um, but I think for now, definitely Ghana, Nigeria, Ivory Coast locally. And then internationally, um, the UK and the US. So we are pivoting to the US this year just because my old boss, they have a strong network there. They are based there. For them, it was a no-brainer for me to have even come there before. So I think in the next three years, you'd see us in some of these markets much stronger in some than others. I think the U.S. will be quite strong for us. Nigeria will be strong. Ghana will be strong. And you'll see us with a portfolio of a few products beyond what we are offering now, which is just plantain chips. And I believe... Over the course of the next two years, the, the brand story will actually start to, to, to shine a bit more. Um, there's the, the brand story that we, we sort of champion is one around cultural revival and cultural evolution. And so that's basically what we are doing through Snacks. But what's really exciting for me is us being able to tell that story through the creative arts. So as a brand, what we are trying to do is to is to sponsor and support the African creative arts to tell that narrative. So we are telling it through food, um, but that's really the, the the area we want to champion. The way Red Bull champions extreme sports, we want to champion the creative arts. I think over the next two years, it would be that would be a really big part of the program, big part of what we're doing, which I think matters a lot in in the foreign markets. I think it's going to start mattering a lot more here. People just don't really tell brand stories here, but I think as you start telling those stories, consumers are becoming uh, a lot more aware. They are becoming um, a lot more nuanced in what they consider. So if you're, if you're a brand that's offering them that, my mom would probably, someone like my mom would never think of something like that. But if she went to a store and on the gondola, she knew that the pack of chips that she was buying was supporting the creative arts or an artist or something. I think that would, it would mean something to her, you know? Um, so mm -hmm. yeah, I think that's what we'll see out of the brand. I, I can't wait. I'm really looking forward. Um, you mentioned product range. Do you want to give us a sneak peek into what you're thinking around the product range? Um, yeah, sure. It's it's. I don't think Get it's one. Too, just generally speaking. I think we will look at other other chips, chip bases. So you even asked me the other time. You know, there's okay. so many things out there in terms of you know cocoa yam. There's cassava. There's a ton of stuff that one can work with. Um, my whole thing was I really wanted to stand up what we were doing now. Um, particularly because if you're in manufacturing um, and you're using local feedstock, for some of the feedstock, it's, it's not very structured. So like plantain, plantain is, is highly, it's, it's everywhere here, but it's not very organized. Um, so we are trying to make sure we have that supply chain very strong before we move to a new product type. But we've been exploring stuff with other chip, chip bases. Um, there's a lot of fruits and dry fruits in the market. So trying to play around with some ideas of what we can do with that. Uh, what I'm trying to avoid is taking very basic uh, products from here, like let's just say nuts as they are and just repackaging it. I'm trying as much as possible to make sure that we're doing something with it before we repackage it. So it's actually being innovated on or innovative. So, um, but yeah, it would be other chip bases and some stuff probably with fruits and nuts. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Super. We're almost out of time, but I wanted to check what are your thoughts around e-commerce? Are you doing anything for that using Francofa? Um, uh, I got to be honest, I, I may be a little bit behind on that for two reasons. I think in Ghana at least, in Ghana, e-commerce for, for food products like mine is a little tougher to break into that market. So we are already on a platform called Thrive Together. We sell through Junior Party, but because we don't offer a whole range, um, like people are very, it's, it's going to be hard for someone to pick up three packs of chips and ask for delivery on it, you know. So we need a, a proper aggregator that we are working with. Jumia, Jumia Party is one we are working with. They're doing pretty decently. Um, but I don't think locally we are going to be going crazy on the on the e-commerce space. I think in other markets we'll have to do that because it's massive. So in the UK, Amazon as a channel, um, our website as a channel has been a big stepping stone for us because once we are not on shelf, we are still able to drive using our website, um, offering free shipping. Um, and I think there's just, it's, it's, it's a whole, it's a massive channel on its own. 
I don't think I familiarize myself with it enough. Um, mm -hmm. So for me to even speak to it properly, yeah, I, I can't really do that just yet. But I know it's a space that I have to look at because it's it's going crazy and it's where everybody is 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 buying their stuff. Having said yeah. that, having said that, I'm still a strong believer in brick and mortar, especially when it comes to food, um, especially snacks, because impulse purchases usually you go into a store, you're not thinking of buying something and you just pick it up. So brick and mortar is, is still always going to be, I think, the creme de la creme for some for some of the brands, yeah, for some of the okay. product types. Super. Well, Jamie, thank you so much. It's been really refreshing for speaking to no you. No problem. For, for opening up and talking to us about your brand, Sankofa, and uh, we hope to see you in the near future doing big things and great things. Thank, thank you very thank much. Thank you. All right. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Adam. Take care. All right.